Welcome! In this series of short videos, we will look at topics for the PowerBasic Windows Compiler. Today, we will look at the use of scroll bars on Windows Forms. Today, we're going to look at the dialog in a Windows application. The dialog we have on screen here has a number of text boxes. These are quite large, multi line text boxes which exceed the size of a dialog. There may be times when you design an application in that the number of objects you wish to put on a dialogue is actually greater than the size of the dialogue. This may come about because the application needs to have all the objects on the same page. It's not unusual to have an application which spreads a number of controls over a number of different dialogues, allowing the user to fill page 1 in before going to page 2 and page 3 and so on. However, there may be times when you need to have all these objects on the one screen. Users are quite used to using a browser and using a vertical scroll bar on the browser to scroll down to see things that are further down on the page. So, can we do this with a Windows dialog? In the objects we have on the screen, we have a number of Windows text boxes. If we double click on one of the text boxes and look at the styles, we'll see that we have already set it for a vertical scroll bar. And the text box is further set to support multi-line and to want a return at the end of a line, which allows you to use the enter key to put carriage return line feed into the text box. All this can be done without any additional code in your callback or event handling function. But can we do it on the dialog itself? Well, if we double click on the dialog, we'll get the properties box up and there is indeed a vertical scroll option. So if we tick that and hit the OK button, we'll see we now have a vertical scroll bar. So if we save that and we attempt to run our application, we get the text boxes appearing on screen with the final text box being partially obscured. However, we do have the vertical scroll bar. But scrolling down the scroll bar does not actually do anything. To achieve this effect on a form, we need to put some code into the callback function, our event handler. So let's have a look at that code. So here we are in the callback function, the event handler for our dialog. There are a few things we need to set up at the beginning of our function, so we'll tackle them first. The first thing we're going to create is a local variable. This is going to use a Windows scroll info user defined type to contain the information on our scroll bar. We want two further variables to keep track of the horizontal scroll value and the vertical scroll value. We'll put an additional variable in to store the previous position of our scroll bar. And we're going to create four variables which we're going to use basically as constants so we can tweak the sizes of the widgets or thumbs in our scroll bar and the amount of change that occurs when you click on the scroll bar. So here we're going to document what each of these constants is going to do. This first one is the number of dialog units by which the dialog window will scroll horizontally if the widget of the scrolling bar travels between its extreme positions of left and right. Feel free to adjust these values to suit your own application. And the long h is the number of dialog units by which the dialog window will scroll vertically performing the same function as the previous one. And the same for the other constants. The scrolling in this code is going to be done by dialog units. If you've created your dialog in the pixels format, you may need to use a dialog units command to convert the two of them. Now that we have those variables set up, it's time to put some code inside the section that handles the initialization of the dialog. We will first populate that user defined type for the scroll info. In here we'll be setting the elements of the user defined type. For example the minimum setting and the maximum setting of the scroll function. And the final command is a Windows API call to set up our vertical scroll bar. And having done the vertical scroll bar we now need to do the horizontal one. Exactly the same process. The only difference being on the call to our set scroll info we're using the SP horizontal constant. So now that we've initialized our dialog, we now have to put some events further down the code to handle when the scroll bars are actually clicked upon. 
So let's handle the vertical scroll first of all. The event we need to create is WMV scroll. This captures a call from the vertical scroll bar. And as before, we're going to be using this user defined type that keeps track of the information from our scroll bar. We can quite happily populate that using another API call, get scroll info. It takes three parameters, the dialog handle, the constant to say it's the vertical scroll bar we're looking for, and the name of the user defined type into which to populate the information. And at that point, we will store the position in our old position variable. Having captured that, we now need to determine what exactly is the user actually did. Did they scroll up? Did they scroll down? Did they scroll up by a large amount, by moving the thumb or widget, or did they use the arrows up and down? So we'll use a case statement here to pull out this information. The case statement is based on cbwparam. So we're using these constants to determine which direction and what type of scroll was actually carried out. Was it a single line going up, or was it an entire page? Or was the user actually moving the thumb or widget up or down? So we're determining the new position by taking the existing position and either subtracting the vertical movement or subtracting the step we've already set up. This allows us to set the new value of the scroll bar. Since our scroll bar has maximum and minimum values, we don't want the user to scroll indefinitely. So we'll set the position to be fixed, either maximum or minimum. This will stop the user scrolling too far. Now having determined where the user has actually moved the scroll bar to, we now have to update the scroll bar and scroll the entire client area to an area that would reflect what the user has actually requested. Another Windows API call to set the scroll info. This will set the vertical scroll bar into its new position. And now we're going to scroll the dialog itself. And we're going to be using yet another Windows API call, scroll window. So now that we have this code in place for the vertical scroll bar, Let's try it out. Here we have a dialog with the five text boxes and our vertical scroll bar. If we click somewhere in the vertical scroll bar, we'll see that the dialog itself is now scrolling up the screen. And it has a maximum beyond which it will not go. So we can scroll either just by grabbing the widget or thumb and moving up or down. We can click in the scroll bar area itself, or we can use the arrow to make a small change either up or down. So we've now achieved the ability to scroll up and down. What we need to do next is to put some more code to handle the horizontal scrolling. But it's going to be exactly the same approach. Firstly, we need to create a case statement for the horizontal scroll event. This, as we did with the vertical scroll event, will be getting the scroll bar user defined type information using the get scroll info and we'll be storing the position. In exactly the same manner as we did for the vertical scroll bar, we need to pick up the details of what the user's actually requested of the scroll bar. Are we moving left or right? Are we going a full page left or right? Or are we using the thumb or widget left or right? So as before, we're setting the new value in our user defined type based on our constants, either removing or adding them to the value that's already there. And just as we did before, we need to limit the amount the user can either scroll left or right by to ensure that they don't scroll everything so far to the left or right that they cannot see the controls anymore. And the final action is to set the scroll info that has been amended and to scroll the dialog itself. So we try running our code now. Our dialog appears. Our vertical scroll bar is still operational to scroll the data up and down on the screen. And the horizontal scroll bar also is operational, allowing us seamlessly and without additional code to scroll all the objects on the screen, left or right. This will allow you to create a dialog which is bigger than the available area on screen. It is indeed quite possible that you may have to cope with users who have very small screens, for example on ultra portable laptops. And if your dialog launch is maximized, it will fit itself to the screen. But with this code in place, even if the objects on your dialog exceed the size of the available dialog on screen, the user will still be able to access them by using the scroll bars. Hopefully you'll find this code useful in your applications, but 
that's it for today. Thank you for watching.